Well, good morning. It is 5.30 a.m. and 20 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And I uh, just wanted to do a video. Three ways to defeat globalists. All right, I'm going to go by order of least important to most important. Different techniques here. And I'll try to keep this video short without rambling too much. <laughs> I'm a preacher, so it's hard for me not to ramble. Uh, it just kind of goes with the territory of being a preacher. But uh, <clears throat> the first thing that you can do to fight against globalists is realize what their god is. Their god is money. Um, they love money. And so you can vote with your dollar. They come out and they want you to drive around little electric wind-up vehicles, you know, little Tesla cars and Rivians and whatever else, Cybertruck and things, bizarre-looking little toys. And uh, you just simply say, no, I'm going to drive a vehicle that uh, uses gasoline. And I'm going to keep that industry strong. And the big guys that are into oil and everything, the big oil men will say, well, you know, hey, we're still making some pretty good money here. Uh, I think we'd like to keep doing this. Um, another good one would be guns. You know, somebody pointed out the one time I was saying, make sure that you buy guns and, you know, keep the industry strong and everything. And uh, somebody said, well, Brother Brian, they said, you know, you do realize that the gun industry, that there are globalists that are in that and that they're making money off of it. Yes, I do realize that. I'm very well aware of that. But the whole point is that by keeping money coming in, the globalists that own the bigger firearms manufacturers and the ammo and all the other stuff, they're looking and saying, hmm, you know, we're, we're making some pretty good money here. We don't really want that being cut off yet. Let's just kind of keep this going for a while because we're making some good money. And <clears throat> so vote with your dollars. That's point number one. Uh, point number two, non-compliance. Um, any law that is passed, any time that they say, okay, we're going to pass this law, this new legislation, whatever else, they have to have at least 60% compliance. Right? They cannot enforce the law unless most people comply with it. Always remember that. Uh, recently here, the ATF just passed a new law, supposedly getting rid of the gun show, gun show loophole thing or something, where people can transact privately with person-to-person uh, -person firearm sales without any kind of background check. Big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, well, that's how criminals get guns. Uh, no, it's not how criminals get guns. Um, I knew a guy over 30 years ago, back when I was a teenager, um, and he told me uh, that he was raised in Philadelphia and he was involved in some gang stuff down there. And he said that as, as uh, teenagers, uh, well, late teens, early 20s, uh, for him it would have been, he said that they actually had access to fully automatic weapons down there as street thugs. And he said to me, he said, you give me an hour of time and $1,000, and he said, I can have any gun you want. And he showed me a pistol the one time, and he said, this pistol was taken off the body of a dead police officer. Don't know if he was telling me the truth or not on that, but, um, I mean, he told the truth in other areas, so I have no reason to question what he was saying. But the whole point is, uh, thugs do not get their guns from gun shops. There's young men right now going around this country and, and things of with a, uh, these get these Glock switches that they put in the back part of the Glock and then it makes it a fully automatic Glock. And they're young. They come out on social media and they post videos of themselves shooting full auto Glocks. You can't get that at a gun show or a gun store. <laughs> How are they getting these, these Glock switches? Oh, but you know, private person to person sales have to be uh, stopped and whatever else. Um, there's another thing I saw yesterday uh, where in Colorado they're passing a law where you are going to have to have insurance for your guns. Each gun you have, I guess, will have to be insured or something like this. Um, okay, that's extremely stupid. Um, the liberal left is 
they they love to take guns away because then they can do whatever they want after the guns are gone. Just study history, all right? Uh, every time the guns are taken away in communist countries, a huge bloodbath uh, follows every single time. It's a historically documented fact. That's why gun ownership is very smart, very important. So rules come out, you don't comply. Uh, you know what happened in 2020? A lot of people complied with a bunch of really stupid rules and look what happened. Now the goonies feel empowered to come out and try to tell us all what to do. That's a problem. Do not comply to things that go against your God-given rights. Again, your God-given rights are threefold because you are made in God's image. You have a body, you have a soul, you have a spirit. So the body, you have bodily integrity. Nobody can tell you what to do with your body. Your soul, you have personal defense. I have a gut feeling. I feel something's wrong here. That's your soul feeling that. And thirdly, your spirit, which is the spirit of your mind. You have free will. Nobody can tell you what to think. All right? Remember that. God-given rights. Bodily integrity, personal defense, and free will. Don't let anybody ever take those from you. No one takes them from you. Even God. Okay? Think about that. Uh, the devil wants to take away those things from you. He wants to control you completely um, and tell you what to do and everything else. God doesn't do that. God, from the very beginning of creation, said, I'm going to give man a free will. He didn't just say, I'm going to program everybody to be, to be robots. Everybody's forced to worship me or whatever else. That's not how God does things. And finally, the most important thing is... Um, you want to make sure that you have the right God and the right Bible, all right? The King James Bible is what this nation was founded upon. Uh, the devil came along with his people and they, they came out with this thing called Codex Sinaiticus. I'm studying about this right now. Um, and I, I was taught a lot of lies about that. And they said, oh, we found older and better manuscripts. We found these older and better manuscripts and things. And, uh, and they didn't. It was all a lie. It was all designed to get rid of the King James Bible. But um, I think it was Horace Greeley said, it is impossible to mentally or socially enslave a Bible reading people because a Bible reading people understands that the word of God is their authority and that man um, cannot usurp that authority. Uh, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. It's not unalienable rights. I have to say that over and over again. People don't get it. It's not unalienable. It's unalienable. You can't put liens. You can't put laws on these rights that God gives. You can't do it. Um, and when you understand, I will fear God and not man. God will protect me. I want to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, I will pray to God. I will ask God to protect me. See, when you do that, then you don't have to worry about laws and things and tyrannical globalists that want to come and try to enslave you. You don't need to worry about that. So those are the three things that you can do. Vote with your dollar um, because globalists love dollars. Uh, number two, do not conform to their psychotic rules and whatever else that go against your God-given rights. And number three, remember that this nation was built on the King James Bible, not the NIV, not the New American Standard Version, not the ESV, or any of the other junk Bibles that come from the Vatican. Um, you know, again, it's in Vatican II, the Second Ecumenical Council, that they would make translations jointly with separated brethren. Um, you know, don't mess with that. See if I can get this on video here. There's a snowshoe hare over here, and he's his fur is changing. Old shelter logic thing here. See him back in there, right there. There he went. Fur is still white, but uh. He's starting to turn the summer collar of tan. But anyhow, isn't this, this beautiful shelter logic shelter thing here? Isn't that wonderful? The old uh, Mick rule, we call it the made in China rule. 
it lasts about two to three years. <laughs> it starts getting torn and then it, then the wind gets it and it just, and just destroys the thing. So, um, thank you, communist China. you you make such fine garbage. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, just wanted to make a quick video here on that. Um, do not give in. We must fight. We must resist. And, uh, so that will be it. Thank you for watching.